What's up guys? This is the IT Ranger and today we'll be making our first Android development tutorial. Yeah, I know you guys been waiting for it and have been excited about it. I've been waiting for it and I've been excited about it too. So I'm really excited about doing this and starting off our first tutorial for Android development. So I know you guys are like, whoa, wait a minute, where's the Eclipse? Where's the Android SDK? What's going on here? Well, I decided to start this off a little bit different. And I want to start it off by actually doing, um, learning what, what you're implementing into the Android development. I don't want you guys to just sit here in front of a tutorial and watch me program and, hey, listen, you do this because of this. I want you guys to actually understand what you're doing and what's all involved with the Android development process. So with all that said, the first thing we'll talk about today in our first tutorial is our Android native libraries. And our native libraries are basically libraries that's compiled that you can actually use in implementing your programs. And they have specific classes that you can use, and they do different things when you need them, depending on what type of program you're uh, programming or you're doing. So in native libraries, the first thing we'll talk about is the Surface Manager. And what the Surface Manager is, the Surface Manager, it allows the system to create all sorts of interesting effects and like um for example like see-through windows or um fancy transition screens or stuff like that the surface manager is control of doing all that so let's take a couple notes here and let's see allows what for the system to create all sorts of interesting all sorts of interesting effects and let's make this a little bigger for you guys and let's make the font bigger so you guys can see it all right and make this a little smaller all right so the surface manager allows for system to create all sorts of interesting effects and let's put as such as um, such as see-through windows, such as like uh, your transparent level or, you know, opacity. So see-through windows and fancy transitions. And it's a lot more that you can do with the surface manager, but the basic thing is you want to know what the surface manager is and how it's implemented in your programming and when you're doing program and different types of code. Uh, what you're actually calling on and what library involves what uh, code you're using or implementing. So um, that's the surface manager there. And the next thing we we'll do is we'll move on to um, 2D and 3D graphics. And 2D and 3D graphics are very, very, very important if you plan on doing um, Android development, uh, making games or any type of thing that involves um, graphics, which most programs do involve graphics except text-based like a to-do list or um, things of that nature. So, 2D and 3D graphics, they're both, as we know, 2D is two dimension, 3D is three dimension. They both can be seen, used in a single user interface. They both can be used, but the, the library actually only uses the 3D if the hardware is available to actually use 3D graphics. 2D can be used in any Android phone, Android developed Android phone. Any Android phone you have can is a, has the ability to use 2D graphics. But 3D graphics, on the other hand, requires specific uh, hardware because 3D graphics takes more uh, processing and more implementation as far as uh, calling on graphics and displaying it on the screen to the user. And if the hardware is not available, the the system must uses like a, a soft fastware. A soft, a fast software to actually render the graphics or to actually display the graphics on the screen. So, in most newer Android phones like the uh, Evo, the Joy X, the Joy Incredible, all those phones have 3D graphics. Most old phones have like the 2D graphics. So, let's put a definition for this. Let's do can be used. Let's put can both be used in a single user interface can okay, both use in the same interface and library 
uses 3D if the hardware is available. Oh man, I hate this. Come on, fine. Don't act up on me. In the middle of my tutorial with these guys. I don't wanna. Alright. So, um, as we see, can, they can both be used in a single user interface library and uses 3D, uh, and the library uses 3D hardware if it's available. And let's go ahead in this block, let's put um, displays graphics to the user. And that's basically what, um, what 2D and 3D graphics are, and they're actually a native library in Android and in the Android uh, software development kit, which we'll probably be using in most of my tutorials in the future when we're uh, writing our programs. So the next thing we'll talk about is our media codecs. And what a media codec is, a media codec is a format or a, a type of um, a system that or a program that allows uh, the Android development to actually play media such as videos, um, music, uh, and, and it can actually record and play back audio. And the media codecs is what allows the Android to do this. Let's put allows Android to play, record, and re play, record, play, and record music and video. So there we go. So we said the media codec allows Android to play and record music and videos. And this is what does it. And the media codec on the Android can play different types of uh, media codecs or different type of formats such as um, AAC, which is used like in most of some YouTube videos. Um, and also can use it such as uh, MP3, WAV files, well, not WAV files, MP3, um, MP, MPEG 4, which is used in some videos and most movies on, if you're watching a movie on your phone, MPEG 4 is usually what it uses. So there we go. So we have a basic definition of what the media codecs are and how they're used in Android. If you're making an MP3 player or anything that's going to be playing videos or anything like that, you'll definitely need to know what media codecs are. The next thing we'll talk about is the SQLite database. And what the SQLite database is, it's a lightweight version of SQL. And I'm sure you heard of a SQL Server or SQL Server. And it's basically, I mean, it's a straightforward definition. It's used to basically present storage for any applications. Just put use to present storage for any application. In the SQL, SQL database, it, it basically, so if you have a program and you want the program to enter the user's name and phone number. So the user enters the name and the phone number, and then at the name and phone number, the user exits out of the phone, the, the application. Well, you don't want the, app, the, the user have to, every time you open up the program, to actually keep entering his name and his number. What you do is you call it the SQLite database. This is where the SQLite database comes in handy, and you would use that to actually put storage for the user information that is inputted into the application. So the next time the application is open, um, the user will not have to enter any information, and the application remembers who the user is and what, what was the last information he entered into the program. Last but not least, we're gonna be talking about the browser engine. And the browser engine is pretty much, uh, it's really it's kind of self-explanatory. Um, it's used for, if you're making a program that's gonna be displaying um, HTML, HTML, which is the internet's uh, protocol or the internet's uh, code, how you write web pages and things of that nature. Um, it's basically the internet language as far as if you're writing a web page or anything of that nature. Um, the thing is with browser engines, if you're going to be using, like if you were making, a, say you're working a browser for Android, if you're using a browser for Android, you definitely want to have the browser engine. Well, you don't have any choice but have the browser engine because you're going to be displaying the HTML and fast content and you're going to need the browser engine to do this, which is the library that handles all the, the actual um, HTML uh, transferring to the cell phone in the library. 
So, and it uses something called a WebKit. And the WebKit library is using some uh, engines such as Safari, uh, Firefox, Google Chrome. They all use a WebKit, uh, the WebKit tool or the WebKit library um, to display HTML. Let's put a basic definition for this. Let's put um, used for fast display of hmm, let's put HTML content. Yeah, let's put uses used for fast display of HTML content and uses WebKit library. And like I said before, the WebKit library is used in most um, most browser engines, such as uh, Safari, your famous ones like Safari, Firefox, and oh, Firefox, and Google Chrome. All right, so there we go. So we just talked about browser engines, and um, take the time to you know kind of jot down some notes while I'm going over the videos. Um, I hope you guys have been kind of jotting down some notes over the last couple of slides that we did because um, this is going to be very essential. It doesn't seem important now, but the further we go, it'll be very essential to making um, making Android development and understanding what I'm actually implementing in my programs and the definitions or the vocabulary that I'm referring to in my terminology. So, um, thank you guys for watching. Again, this is our first Android development tutorial about the IT Ranger. And hey, don't forget to subscribe. And you know what? I'll catch you guys next time. All right.